All right. In this video, we will see how we can extend our APIs that were developed in the last episode to integrate with DynamoDB. So, we will be creating DynamoDB using CloudFormation with serverless framework and then extending our function methods to use the AWS SDK to interact with DynamoDB. So, first, let us go and look into the console and see DynamoDB. So I click on DynamoDB and as you can see I don't have anything. Right? Basically when we create a table it asks for table name. There is a partition key, sort key along with the capacity modes whether we want to use on demand, pay per use, provision capacity etc. So very simple. So what we will do is we will create DynamoDB using cloud formation with serverless framework. Okay. So the first thing what you need to do is go to Google and you can search for DynamoDB cloud formation. So you will get the first link, click on it. And in this you will see the syntax which is available in JSON as well as YAML. We will be using YAML in our series. So the first thing you will notice is there are a lot of properties that are available. We don't need everything to get started with DynamoDB. So what we will do is we will look into those fields which are required. As you can see here, we have various things like billing mode, key schema which is required, right, table, table name and so on. Okay, so the first thing now what we will do is we will copy this out along with the properties into our serverless YAML file. Okay. So let me close all this for now. And I'll just keep serverless YAML open. Okay. So within the serverless YAML file, we need to have something known as resources. Okay. The way it looks is resources and under resources there is resources. Now this is because this is how cloud formation usually works. Okay, this is what AWS cloud formation expects. Okay, and within this we can define our resources. Okay, so let's say we have a resource called tasks table which is the DynamoDB. We have to give a logical name for the same. So let me call it as task table. Okay. And within this we need to copy the ones that we saw in their documentation. Okay. So the first thing what we will copy is the type and properties. So copy this out. Paste. Make sure it is indented correctly. And under properties we can use the properties that are absolutely needed. Okay. So we saw that one of those properties that was needed is table name which took string as an value right so I can call my table task but as we discussed that we want this to be created for multiple environments so what we will do is we will append the page that we supplied right onto the table name in order to do so, what I'll do is 
I would want the table name to be something like tasks hyphen dev task hyphen test tasks hyphen prod. So hyphen in order to reference those property, I open dollar curly braces and I want to reference to this stage variable here. So in order to reference to this file itself, we call it self similar to opt refer to the options or the CLI arguments. If I want to refer to the properties within the same file, I need to give it as self and then colon and then the path. So path for the stage is provider dot stage. So look for provider dot stage in self that is in this current file look for the value in provider dot stage all right so the next property that we are interested in is billing mode billing mode takes in string and if we click on it we see that it takes in two values provision or paper request we want to use paper request okay so let's copy this and the property name was billing mode we paste it okay and the other two important properties that were required was attribute definitions. Now attribute definition is required and is conditional. Okay. Now what does this attribute definitions have? So we can click on this attribute definition. And you can see that the attribute definition takes in two properties which is attribute name and attribute type all right so let's go ahead and use this in our environment okay so attribute definitions it's a list since we can have more than one attribute definition the two properties were attribute name Let's consider that my task has an ID, which is our partition key as well. So we will use attribute name as ID and attribute type is number. So we don't provide number as such. If you look at the documentation, the number is denoted as N. We can have a look at it. So if we click on this, attribute definition and if you go down to attribute type you will notice that there are three values from which we can select we use the s for string n for number and b for binary okay since our task is a number i use n all right so the other important thing that is required is key schema and the key schema as you can see is required and the structure for that is soft type json and key schema is defined in the attribute definitions okay so you can look into it if you see it takes in attribute name and key type and the key type value that are allowed is hash for a partition key and range for a sort key. All right. So let's go ahead and define key schema. It is a list attribute name. It is this ID. So we use this ID and key type since this is a partition key i use the value hash 
if we had a range key that is sort key we would use the value as range okay so once we have this we are done from a resource point of view if we want to see everything is good or not what we could do is we can give a deploy command and let's see if everything goes through okay so i can do sls deploy and to print more logs i can do hyphen hyphen verbose okay so as part of this declaration it should create a dynamo db table with the name task hyphen the stage which is dev the partition key should be id which is of type number and the billing mode should be paper request that is on demand okay so as we can see it is creating all the necessary resources okay so let us give it a minute and as you can see it has finished with the process so we can go back to our aws console let's click on tables in our dynamo db and you can see that we have a table created with name tasks iphone dev which was our stage name the partition key was id which is of type n which is number and the read and the write capacity mode is on demand which is pay per request all right so we have the dynamo db table that is created through code without we having to do anything manually okay so one of the improvements that we can do here is we are defining all this in the same serverless yml file and as your project grows this file will become very heavy and too difficult to maintain so what we can do is we can take this stuff from here okay so what we can do is we can copy this from here and we had created a resources folder within the resources folder let's create task table dot yml a file and we'll paste it here okay we can format this as well okay and we will reference the content from this file into our serverless yaml file so what i will do is i will remove this part i will keep the logical name task table here okay and in order to reference we have this dollar calibrasis serverless framework provides you a function called file and within this file you can supply the location that is resources slash task table dot yml and from this file colon look for task table okay so what this will do is it will go to this task table dot yml and from there it will reference to the task table and whatever value is there in that task table it will replace it here okay so we do that let's just give this command again basically it should work as this without any problem because we haven't changed anything as such we have just refactored those content into a separate file okay so while this is in progress our next step would be to integrate dynamo db into our three functions that is create task get task and update task 
So in order to do so, we will be using AWS SDK. Okay. So the first thing what you can go do is npm install AWS hyphen SDK. Okay. So this will install the AWS SDK package. And let us look into the documentations. So for that you could do AWS DynamoDB JavaScript SDK. Okay. Since we want to use the DynamoDB, click on that. And you will have all the documentation on how to use it. So one way is to use this DynamoDB, AWS.DynamoDB. But down the line, they had something called document client, which is much easier to use and is a preferred approach. So if you scroll down, you will see document client. And in this document client, you can get started with new DynamoDB document client, which takes in certain options. And it has various functions like delete, get, put, query, scan, update, etc. Okay. So let us go ahead and integrate our create task function with DynamoDB. So since we want to create something in the DynamoDB, we'll have to use the put method. And this is the code that we need to use. Okay. So what we will do is let's go to our file that is create task. Okay. As I mentioned, I want everything to be well segregated. So what I will do is I will create under source. I'll create a folder called utils. Okay. And under utils, I'll create a file called database.js. Okay. So here I will create a Dynamo DB. So I will require the AWS SDK. I don't want to load the entire AWS SDK because I just want to use the Dynamo DB from it. And I want this size to be pretty small. So within AWS SDK, you can go under clients and you will see DynamoDB in it. Okay. Then we will create a document client. Okay. Which is new DynamoDB dot document client, which takes options. If you press control space, you will see it takes various options like max retries, region, etc. Okay, so what we will do is we will use region. Okay, now this region is something that we had defined in our serverless YML file. But in order to use it within our code, we will have to export it as environment variable. Right. So what we will do is we will go back to our serverless YML file and declare this environment variable. So either you can have environments defined at the function level. Okay. Or you can mention it in the provider level. Whatever you supply in the provider level will be applied and be made available to all your defined functions. Now, since here all my function need to talk to database. So what I will do is I'll declare those environment variables as part of the provider section. Okay. So the key that I need to use is environments. Okay. It is environment. Sorry. And within this, I can give a key called region. And the value should be the one that is here, right? As part of region. So we have already seen how to reference 
a property within the same serverless file so i will use dollar self provider dot region okay great so the next thing in order to use this region here i can use the standard way process dot env dot region all right so in addition to this we can supply some more options like max retries i could say that if something fails try for three times and also if there is some problem i can supply the timeout values and so on i'll say timeout to be 5000 that is 5 seconds okay and the last thing is since i want to use this document client in my three functions i will do module dot exports equal to document client okay now let us use this in our create task okay so the first thing what i will do is i will bring in those document client that we exported recent a few seconds back require dot dot utils slash database okay Great, so I have the document client. Now we will go back to our documentation. We need to supply this params. So I'll just copy this params. We don't need all of those. Okay. So before we do that, what I will do is I'll create a try catch. And within try, I will give this params. Okay, so what all we need is table name. We need to provide the hash key. Okay, this item is basically our body, right, that we need to insert. And it should have a partition key. Okay, so table name we need to supply. Again, what will happen is our table names will be dynamic created as for different environment so we hard coding the table name won't be correct so what we will do is similar to how we have reference region we will also reference the table name but as you could see here we are creating the dynamo tb automatically or programmatically as part of the serverless framework so how do we get the table name that was created as part of this resource provisioning for that we can go back to the cloud formation documentation we saw this this was the syntax so if you scroll down there will be a section called outputs okay or the return values you can see there are two options one is ref this ref gives us the table name okay and then there is a get attribute this is known as an intrinsic function function get att and this gives us two values arn and stream arn we will have to use this as well down the line but for now we need the table name which we can get using this ref okay in order to use this ref what we will do is we will go back to our serverless yaml file okay and we need the environment variable called the task table task table and in order to refer that we saw that we need to use ref which is an intrinsic function so the shorthand operator for intrinsic function in serverless is this exclamation mark ref and provided with the logical name of our resource. The logical name for our task table was task table, right? So we copy this 
we put it here now this task table will hold the value from this task table using this intrinsic function ref now this we can use it in our file so what i can do is const task table name equal to process dot env task table okay i can use this task table now here and in the item we want id which we will get from this data which we have passed via the input body right this data will have id title description because that's what we were passing here right so id title description so we will use it id id is from data dot id title data dot title description data dot description okay then we need to call the document client to actually save this the so document client dot put we need to pass this params and in order to receive a promise dot promise okay so we can make a wait so if we use await we will need to make this function as async okay and if everything goes well i want to pass a callback right so this is okay so i can copy this actually so let me copy this all back from here 201 and in the body i will actually pass the data right whatever we had created okay so what we can do is json dot stringify data if there is an error I will just do a console dot error error and also I will use callback null and instead of this I'll pass 500 and instead of data I'll say error error dot message okay all right so we have this so let's just test this method first before we go ahead with get tasks and update tasks so sls deploy so this will deploy all these things along with this environment variables which will be passed to our create task method Okay, so let's give it some time. Okay, so it's almost completing. So while this is going on, we can try to code the get tasks and update tasks as well. Okay, it should be pretty simple. Okay, anyways, 
uh, this is complete so we'll test this out first okay so i go back to my api http i make a call to my create method and if you see we get an error now what this error suggests is that it is missing permission to put item into this arn right that is it is this lambda function is not having the access to put an item into the dynamo db table okay so what we need to do is we need to provide the necessary permission to the function to add any item to dynamo db okay so the way how we do it is in the serverless yaml file we need to supply something known as the iam role statements iam role statements okay this is an array which takes in a key called effect which should be allow okay and then it has action which is again a list and this action is the one that we are trying to perform so if you look at the error here it says the action is dynamo db put item so we can copy this and paste this here and the last part is the resource okay now the resource is this arn if you notice when we saw the outputs of the cloud formation in the documentation right you notice we had this intrinsic function called get att which would return this arn so we can use this intrinsic function in order to get the arn for our dynamo db table okay so for that what i will do is use the intrinsic function get att give the logical name that is task table and within it use a method called arn okay now the problem here is we are defining this i am role statements in the provider section as you can remember whatever we supply within the provider section will be applicable for all the functions that we define here now why would function called get task need access to dynamo db put item doesn't make sense right so the best practice is to limit the permissions to your function to only those that are actually needed okay so in order to have it we need to use a serverless plugin which would allow you to define this i am role statements per function okay so for that we need to install a serverless plugin called serverless hyphen i am hyphen roles per function in order to do that give serverless plugin install hyphen n serverless hyphen i am hyphen roles Hyphen per function. Okay, what this would do is this would add a dev dependency, and at the same time in the serverless YAML it will create a plugins, and it will define that plugins there. Okay. Now what I can do is I can copy this from here and paste it under the respective function. Now that was part of this. So under handler or at the same level of the handler, you can paste it. Okay. As you can see, I have pasted the I am rule statements as part of the create task. So let us deploy this change and then retry our 
create task API. Okay. So while this happens, what we will do is we will go ahead and code our get task API as well. Okay. So the thing is very simple as to create task. I will copy this two things from here. I will paste it here. Okay. And within this method, what I will do is I will copy this entire try catch, paste it down here. Okay, now since this is get tasks, I don't need to supply this item, it just needs the table name. And instead of put, we need to use something called as scan. Can is not good actually, but for this example, we will use scan because we don't have a lot of data in DynamoDB. So, scan will not be expensive. Okay, but otherwise, we need to prevent scan and use the right data modeling techniques for DynamoDB. Okay, so we will use params dot promise. Okay, and if everything goes well. I want to return the output from here that is const data okay here all right and uh, I have a wait so I need to put this async here okay while we have completed this what we will do is uh, our deploy is completed so we will go ahead and execute our create task method it was failing some time back and now you see it is successful now since id was our partition key if i run this command again it will fail basically okay now here it did not fail you notice it just went ahead why is that so if we want this to fail we need to supply an additional parameter in our create task method okay which is called conditional condition expression okay and this takes in value attribute not exists id so what this will do is it will ensure that if it is not existing it will create okay so let us deploy this change and along with this change we will also have our get task deployed okay but get task so what we will do is we'll cancel this now for get task we need access to the scan item right so we need to go ahead and supply it in the serverless yaml file so i'll copy this im role statement and i'll paste it under get task okay and instead of put item it will be can okay we will deploy this change all right so we have our functions deployed so let's go ahead and run our create task again with the same key that is id1 and now if you see it has failed with 500 stating the conditional request failed which is exactly what we want we could achieve this because of this condition expression that we added as part of the put call as part of the params similarly let us go ahead and do a 
get items that is get tasks and as you can see it has returned one items as part of our code so we have these things working i can go ahead and create my second item okay do a send i have this item created if i do a get task i receive two items and you can see it's pretty seamless so similarly let's do this for our last function that is update task so for that what i will do is i will copy the create task okay we will put it here and at the same time i need to bring in this to of the require utilities here all right now in params it needs task table okay and since this is an update it takes in key okay it takes in key okay key is an object and it is id for us and we need to supply something known as update expression okay the format is set title equal to we need the body right so i can do const data json dot parse event dot body okay so i can use this here data dot title but as you know concatenating in this fashion is not the right way so what we do is we will use some kind of expression attributes and expression values okay so what i will do is the title i will put something like hash title okay and for the values i'll use something like a colon title okay the name here actually doesn't matter okay it is basically a parameter or variable that you are defining whose value you will supply in the next statement right similarly to title we will also want the description to be changed right so i will use the same way now the next important thing is we need to supply something known as expression attribute names okay which is an object now this expression attribute names are these names okay so i need to specify this and what is the actual field name that is title similarly hash description that is this one should refer to the field called description all right similarly we need to also supply expression attribute values okay and those are this parameter substitution so colon title the value should be the one coming in from data data dot title for description it is data dot description and similar to what we did for create we need to supply condition expression that is update these values only if there is an entry for that id already in the database right so attribute exists id okay and the next part is instead of put we will use update 
and then this will be 200 and we will pass in this data all right great so i have this done and in my serverless.yaml i will copy this and i will add this i am role statements to my update task and instead of put item it will be update item great let's deploy this again and let's wait for it to complete okay so we have our changes deployed so let's go ahead and check our update method now i don't have idv10 i do a send request and it has failed okay uh let's let's try with something that we already have right so i'll take this my second task updated okay let's do a send okay and it has failed fantastic now why it has failed okay so what we will do is let's go to the cloud watch and see what is the error okay so go to cloud watch open the log groups update task click on the latest log stream and we have a error saying unknown application error occurred user code syntax error all right so let us see what is the error okay so this is the update task so we took the parameter id we have a data we have used the key task table name update expression expression attribute names condition expression we have await document okay we have await so we need to add a sync and let's deploy it again and see whether it works okay so we have our changes deployed let's go ahead and test out our update method okay disk is not defined why is it so right but this is a it's still better than the last time right it is giving us something so we need to find what is going on wrong okay it's saying description is not defined okay data dot desc okay <clears throat> okay so the error says the esc is not defined so if you go back to our update task and if you notice here this should be a value okay and not a it should be a string value right we are trying to say that the hash title should map it to a title string right which is the field name okay so let us deploy this and let's wait for it to complete okay so we have our changes deployed so let's go and test this out so now it says an expression attribute value used in expression is not defined attribute value is desc okay so the problem was i had a typo here okay with respect to the field that i had used and at the same time what happens is our id right is a number but when we get it from 
the URL, it is of type string. So we need to convert it into a number. Okay. And provide it. And once deployed, we can execute our update. And now it has worked. Okay. I am enjoying my second task. I click on send and it is updated. I can do a get all and I see my tasks are updated. Okay. So in this episode, we have seen how to use DynamoDB. We created the DynamoDB tables, used the intrinsic functions, referenced it in our serverless YAML file, as well as used the AWS SDK for our functions to integrate with DynamoDB. And in the same process, we got a lot of errors which we fixed, which is a good sign because unless you don't get those errors, you will not feel very confident. So I believe at the end of this episode, you are as confident as you could. And in the next episode, we will look into the Lambda authorizers where we will protect our API using a token based authentication. All right. So I will see you in the next episode. Until then, keep learning.